on. It has been like really long time since I've posted anything and I am so sorry. I am going to finish the anatomy and physiology of singing. I'm absolutely going to finish that. And I know I still have to do something on the tongue, physiology of the tongue. Uh, and I really want to do a post about vowels, um, kind of the myth of like the pure vowel and like what does that mean in singing. Um, and then, you know, just general things like that. And I also absolutely 100% do have a video of my vocal folds being all a little bit wonky and a little bit not so much closing together, not so much movement that I'm going to post. That's going to be more of a slide based video. Um, because I think that's the best. What I'm going to do is include like a little bit of, it's going to kind of look like a lecture. Sorry guys, but I, I've been really trying to figure out like a really sleek, cool way to do this, and I literally couldn't figure it out. And I've been dinking with it for months, and it's just been ridiculous. So I'm just gonna do it the way I know how to do it, which is to make like a presentation, um, and like a slide presentation where I could get you oriented to what you're looking at, and then show the video and give you some talking about like what you're seeing and kind of what it means to my voice. And I might do a separate post with me videoing how the paresis still does affect me even though I've um, gone through some voice therapy and, and I'm in generally pretty good shape for it. Um, there's definitely still sometimes a bit of an effect that I notice just in my daily living. So I might just talk about that a little bit. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, it's been a while. So for one thing, uh, my husband and I moved to a new apartment in the same city, but that was a bit of a to-do. Um, I also finished my clinical fellowship in speech language pathology. So yay, that means that I now have a certificate of clinical competence or we call them the C's. I guess C's from your perspective, whichever one is right, just pick a C. <laughs> There's three of them. Uh, so if you see for speech language pathologists in, a, in the United States, uh, we get to sign uh, CCC SLP, like dash SLP, at the side of our names when we're signing official documents. That means we finish the clinical fellowship and we have the official license to practice speech language pathology in our own right. Yay! So I have finished that. Huzzah! Um, and so things are going pretty well clinically. As far as the PhD goes, I'm actually um, transferring... I'm going to go back to the University of Arizona, but I'm going to transfer over to the neuroscience program because I got super into the neuroscience work I was doing in my lab rotation uh, before I took the break to do the clinical fellowship. And so I decided I wanted to transfer over to that neurophysiology lab where we're doing a lot of work on like electrodes on facial muscles um, and just finding out some super cool stuff there. Hopefully, hopefully we find out super cool stuff. Um, so I'm actually really excited about that, but that meant I had to put in a new application uh, to officially transfer over. So I put in the application a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was maybe it was beginning of October. I put it in, um, and and the the head of the lab has agreed to be my my new uh, PhD advisor, my new mentor, which will be great. I've gotten most of the classes done actually, so I'm mostly in just dissertation phase when I go back, when I go back. So if everything goes well, I'm hoping I can start some of at least the research or something on the dissertation pretty soon, like maybe January, um, not sure. So gonna have to figure that one out, but I'm definitely gonna be going back for a PhD, but my PhD will now be in neuroscience, not in speech language pathology. Speech language pathology or speech language and hearing sciences is going to be my minor PhD because I took enough classes for it to count as the minor. Um, but I took so many classes as a PhD. I was a PhD minor in neuroscience at the University of Arizona. And I took all the major classes that were necessary, essentially. And I got so into a lot of that work and a lot of those, those, those classes. It's just so fascinating and I just loved it. So um, basically... Uh, my transcript is pretty much set for a PhD in neuroscience as well. So it's not really going to make it that much longer before I can graduate, which is like awesome. Hopefully not that much longer anyway. 
Uh, benefit of neurophysiology, we're doing work on humans, so that takes a little less time than if you ever know anyone who does neuroscience or like microbiology or anything and they work with animals. Sometimes their work can take forever. Um, <laughs> Uh, and we don't usually, you know, usually with humans, you don't quite have that same issue. It's definitely going to take longer than I think. I think it might take me a couple extra years to finish the PhD just in terms of how research goes and the amount of time it takes for you to, you know, you collect the data, then you analyze the data. That takes forever. And then, you know, you have to like, of course, disseminate your results, send it out, all that stuff, write up the dissertation, which also takes forever all of that stuff. So I still have all of that in the future for my life. And I'm not going to focus too much on all those details because then I start going a little crazy and I start thinking, oh my God, what am I doing? Anyways, so I'm still um, in a, living in the city where I live and doing my clinic stuff. I have some voice clients. I have kind of a variety right now. I have a I have a transgender client and I have a voice client, um, a few other voice clients, and then a lot of kids, mostly. I'm doing a lot of kids. Um, so <laughs> uh, kids with autism and, and all of that. I'm not in the schools anymore. I was in a school for two days out of the week. I was, I was a contractor to a school in, um, in Oakland, California, um, as a through the private practice but I chose not to go back to a school because it was really that was like a whole lot of work I was quite overwhelmed quite frankly at that school I was really burnt out by the end of the semester because um, I had about 25 kids on my caseload so 25 kids to see I was there two days out of a week so I had to see 25 kids in two days and then, which was a lot of groups, so I'm seeing a lot of kids in groups, and that takes a lot of energy. <sighs> and then, um, and then also on top of that, like you have the individualized education plan, you have those meetings, IEP meetings. I had to do assessments and all this stuff within those two days, um, and so it was just a lot. So I was like, you know, let me just do the private practice and get used to that, um, and learn a little bit about that because maybe I want to open up a practice of my own in the future. I don't know. I might. I might want to open up like a voice practice at some point. So it'll be good to have the private practice experience and kind of see what that's all about and learn a little bit about, you know, insurance and how that works and the importance of having a really great person doing the billing and that kind of thing because it's insurance in the United States. Health insurance in the United States of America is a mess. It always has been. It's been a mess, or at least I don't know if it's always has been, but it's been a mess for a long time and it still is a mess. So... There you go. It's just a mess. Um, and I think everyone who works in the healthcare profession in this country would tell you it's a mess. <laughs> so it's just a lot. There's a lot of red tape to deal with. There's a lot of, you know, back and forth and you, you have to hire people to handle it. That's what I've learned. Definitely going to hire someone to handle that for me because holy cow, there's a lot to know about. Um, and so, yeah, so that's what's been going on with me. And I do have a video also that I'm going to post hopefully tonight. I might just do the voiceover right now. It's going to look more like a lecture video, but it's showing you my vocal folds from a uh, flexible endoscopy and stroboscopy, video stroboscopy workshop I attended in early March, last March. Oh, my gosh. And it's almost November. Holy cow. Um, that's insane. Anyway, time just went way too fast. Um <laughs> so, um, I'm going to post that and what I'm going to do is it's going to look kind of like a little luxury thingy because I'm going to give you a little sense of what you're looking at on the screen because it's kind of hard to see sometimes what you're really paying attention to. But then I'm also going to show the video and then describe some of the things you're seeing in the video. And I might make a separate video where I talk about just how the vocal fold paresis actually still does affect me. Um, just as a speaker, even in regular everyday life, I've noticed some things and how it just kind of impacts me and, and it changed a lot of how I practice, of course, singing. So uh, I'll probably do a bit of that. I'm going to finish the tongue uh, physiology on, on uh, anatomy and physiology, talk about vowels and diction um, when it comes to training. Oh, and I also started an Instagram account called The Science of Singing. Um, there's really nothing on it at the moment, but my plan on there is to post like little one minute videos of my singing because I'm really, really, really bad at singing right now. Like I haven't practiced hardly at all for a long time. And <laughs> 
part of it is I don't want to disturb my neighbors and part of it is I'm you know at work until kind of late because we see all the kids after school and so yeah I mean I just really have not been doing much so I thought maybe this will be a good way for me to get back into singing a little bit even if I have to do just like one minute you know like three times a week or something at least it's something right it's like doing a five minute workout I guess right so um yeah so I'm gonna do that and um that's it so that's my official update I really 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 am gonna get back into posting more regularly I promise I actually have a friend who's like staying on me this time and she's gonna like when I don't post. So now I have someone holding me accountable for sure. So <laughs> that'll actually help a lot because I get very distracted. Um, I get distracted by future plans, quite frankly. That's just how I am. So like, you know, when I think there's all this stuff I need to organize about my life in the future, when I have like months worth of planning set ahead of me, it like kind of overwhelms me and it gets really hard for me to like stick to the things that I want to do right now. And I, I know a lot of people have that issue and I'm not saying it's like I'm not special or anything and it's definitely not an excuse, but it definitely happens. And so I'm really going to try to get over that and like still do the things I want to do now, even though I'm planning for things to change in the future and to not like get so overwhelmed with my mental plans that like I tie myself up into little mental knots and then think I don't have time or I'm not, I'm too stressed out. I can't, you know, like, eh, okay. I'm going to try to do better with that on a personal note. All right, folks. Um, so stay tuned. More videos to come. Bye-bye everybody.